Hey guys, I'm Reptile, a multi-season challenger AD carry in EOS and Korea. In the past I've also played professionally for Fnatic and if you care about having a sip of that ELO potion, my solo queue series will be very interesting to you. In this video series we will be going over all the things you need to climb in solo queue. Today's topic is the importance of playing around enemies cooldowns while laning. Lots of people do not pay attention or do not have the matchup knowledge to track cooldowns and abuse windows that enemies give them. This is also why I often advise to get comfortable on like two to three champions so you can learn how to play the matchups since you kind of at least know all AD carries and supports cooldowns. Obviously it's better knowing every single cooldown in the game but let's go step by step and look at an example of one of my previous games to sort of give you an idea of how it works. Alright, straight into the first example, Kaiser Lolo versus Smolder Penfin. Look at how far away I position from Smolder's W and Penfin's W range until one of them misuses it. As you can see, I'm just trying to head away from max range to get level 2 first and as soon as I bait out the Smolder W, I can walk up and try and trade. Now I don't need to care about Penfin Wing on me because they will not have the damage to kill me. And we just get a free kill like this. Obviously, that won't fucking happen if the Penfin doesn't W on me, but oftentimes people in lower elos will fall for even easier baits. This already got us into a game winning spot which is able to push out the wave and get a recall and an item advantage and they'll end up on a freeze since the wave stacks up under their tower and slow pushes back into us. Our jungler is bot side and I ping him to gank them as they suck on this wave and I'll be able to pick up an easy kill. After this we could keep freezing the wave and the game was basically over. Now look how easy you can even outplay ganks if you just track the cooldown of the enemies. Maokai W is a 13 second cooldown level 1 and his Q is a 7 second cooldown. Out of the corner of my eye I see Lee Sin use W and Q as well. His Q is a 10 second cooldown, his W is a 12 second cooldown. So right now I have about like a 10 second window of where enemies can't really do anything to me. My looks misses E but hits the Q so we get the Lee Sin. I play it even to save, I should be spacing forward, I clicked way too often backwards but it's still an easy double kill and the game is also just fade up one in early game. On to the next clip, Smolder Lulu versus Wei and Zillion. Not the most likely matchup to happen in solo queue, but what matters is the concept that we're trying to teach with the cooldowns. So just look at how the lane shifts as soon as people use their abilities. Zillion misses Q. Wei uses Q. Or is QQ whatever, I don't know exactly how it's called but we immediately step up and try to zone them off the wave. Then he misses again. The worst thing that can happen is we get hit by this poke. And look, they have nothing to return, no abilities up. He is forced out of the lane. Yeah, we basically just try to trade on timers where enemy can't return as much damage as we give to them. It is really abusable in some type of matchups. In other type of matchups, it will not be as abusable since your matchup is harder due to enemies having stronger early game than you or whatever. But yeah, that's the main concept we're trying to look for. Enemy ways to spell, instantly punish. Another example from the same game where he uses three abilities. So right now he's on cooldowns. Dylan uses his bomb, so he doesn't have like a double bomb either. I get level up from the creep. Probably if the wave here hits, we don't kill. Uh, but even then, what's important is just to look how we start going aggressive as soon as they use their abilities. Just look at the start, where he uses his E ability, his W ability, his Q ability. So he has some cooldowns. Dylan is level 2. Currently only has Q and E, so he can't get a double bomb. Yeah, so all the abilities are out. I get a level up. Lulu's already actively trying to find an all-in since they have no abilities up right now. They just get the way E up again. Well, it doesn't matter. Zillin just dies. Next scenario is Vayne Soraka versus Draven and Thresh. Important to note here is that I'm about to hit level 6 off of just one minion, but my HP condition is not in the best spot since I took quite a bad trade. Thresh also used Lantern, which is quite a long cooldown, so if Draven ever oversteps, we can just chase him down the whole lane with my ult. As soon as I see the Soraka Q land, I'm also playing around my own teammates cooldowns. If Soraka Q lands, her W gives me more healing. So here I know that we're about to win the all in. I still know though that Thresh has E and Q up, so I need to try and avoid that. I cancel an auto by mistake, but I'm just clicking back to avoid the Thresh hook. 
And now he knows that he cannot survive anymore and he's just trying to suicide to save his raven. In the end, it doesn't really matter though, since we can chase him down the whole lane, as I said, and the game is completely won. Since if you have a lane that double outscales Bane and Soraka versus Raven and Thresh, and you 2v2 kill them, get a double kill early game, it's just completely over for them in most cases. Alright, obviously this concept can be taken beyond lane phase into river fights dragon, uh, team fights 5 versus 5s, baiting out cooldowns in team fights, playing around important cooldowns on team fights, thinking ahead. That will be much more complex and I'll make a separate video on that. But I still want to look at this example of a river fight where enemy mid lane is roaming down. And look how look how they play it. So I see Kama use W, Kama use E before, and now she uses Q. And Nivea also used her ult wall and q e on set so they have no cooldowns i hit my w on the karma so i know if i go in i cannot get sunned i also have cleanse up now important is that i know that karma has flash up so i don't ult behind her i don't hold ult down so she can like flash up i ult right on top of her so no matter which direction she flashes to the left down over the wall or down to the tower she cannot get away Next example will be about cooldown baiting, because basically how it works is, if I know enemy has all spells up, I can try to bait them out. I bait out a smaller W, I dodge the Nautilus hook, and now I know the cooldowns are obviously down, so I can instantly just all in. Once again, I want to mention, this looked extremely boosted by enemy team. This Nautilus completely failed his flash, but Nautilus is actually an LEC player that has reached rank 1 multiple times on EO West. So even if it looks like I'm playing against complete noobs, you can for sure 100% do this in any game below Challenger and even in Challenger as you can see. Also, just to show I don't die here. Alright, next example, Kaiser Leona versus Smolder and Braum. Here I'm just trying to push out the wave and that's why I use all my abilities on the wave to get a base off. But look exactly what happens as soon as someone uses their cooldowns. I use my cooldowns on the wave. Enemy tries to go on me using Braum Q and Smolder W. Both of it misses. And as soon as this happens, Leona instantly ease forward because she knows they don't have damage abilities up right now. Rom uses shield. I know that we can't really kill him, but it's important to know that these cooldowns are down right now. I'm walking back to give them a false sense of security because right now I know their cooldowns are down and we can probably punish them if they overstep. Now I'm out of Brom's vision and as soon as I'm out of his vision he turns to go on the Leona because she seems exposed and alone without any cooldowns up since she just used all of her abilities as well to go on the Brom. Her W is the spell that makes her tanky and she doesn't have it. Q will be up again soon since it's low cooldown though. Brom turns and as soon as I see Brom turning I walk back in Leona also turns and we manage to punish the Braum and make him burn his flash. And now we get into a cheese position where we know they kinda wanna push out the wave and they don't expect us to stay and Braum doesn't have flash so we pick up a kill. So yeah, important to remember, do not waste your cooldowns if you don't wanna end up being punished and if you do waste them by mistake, make sure to not walk up and take unnecessary damage. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to not miss out on any future videos as I'll be making weekly guides to help you climb in League.